Today is a day for making soup. We as Turkish people love our soup. At least six times a week, we make soup. And we have eight different main techniques of making soup and over 100 different recipes of soup making. Today, I want to summarize these main techniques, giving you some ideas of what you can do at home. And also, what's great about soups is, one, it's a great way of filling your stomach full with something warm. Now, gas crisis coming up, warm soup is more important than ever. Secondly, it's a great way of eating vegetables. Some of the vegetables that is like hard to chew, long to chew, can turn into a soup and make great tasty thing. Third, it's low calorie and it's guilt free. Fourth, you can carry it everywhere with a thermos. You can have your soup at any time and it's great reasons soup making is there for us. I'll start with the best selling soup in Turkey and it's the lentil soup, a soup that can save your life. We love our lentil soup on the channel. We have a long version. I'm putting the link here, but I want to summarize it very fast. You get the red or the yellow lentils, rinse it really well, take the white water away. You can water your plants with it, then put it on the stove with some water, some onions. Onion will give it a nice taste and then put some stock and let it boil. First, the lentils will crack and open and it's gonna have this great taste. To increase the taste, we make a roux. That's optional. If you're on a diet, you don't need to make the roux. You put a bit of butter, you put some flour and you mix it really well. First, it's gonna be golden. We don't want the golden one. Golden one is gonna make it thicker, but for the lentil soup, we don't need it that much. We want the nutty taste. So after a while, it's gonna turn to light brown and a little darker, That's and the taste is great before it burns. We put it in the soup, and bzzz, a bit of salt, voila, we get our lentil soup. This is a great soup, and it's also a great base. Indians, for example, use it as a version with some herbs, as dal, make it thicker. It's great with a lot of stuff, but as a soup itself, it's quite fulfilling. You can eat it with croutons, you can put some kadayif in, for a crunch. In Cyprus, we eat it with a lot of olives. The lentil soup is great with olives too. For example, you want to also salad, but you want to eat something warm. Put your salad in your soup and eat it together. Then it's a warm thing and you get the salad as well. Perfect course. Do they have to use the uh, yellow and the orange ones? Or what about the green ones or the other ones? You can use green lentils as well. Green lentils would do the same. It won't look as sexy as the red or the yellow lentils, but if you have green lentils more, you can do it with green lentils as well. We get this lentil soup into another level and it's called ezogelim. To do that, we put some onions, some carrots, some potatoes, and we fry them a bit together, and then a bit of tomato paste, passata or tomato puree. We put some bulgur as well, some salt. Then we close the lid, let it boil, and let the lentils crack, and it becomes a puree. Then you put it into a grinder, becomes the silky smooth thing, but the bulgurs will stand on its own still. The grinder wouldn't do anything to them. And several herbs, thyme, some mint, red flake pepper. So it becomes this perfect soup. And make it into a better taste. We add a knob of butter finally, and it becomes even greater. So that's Ezogelin soup driven from Marjimek. using yogurt as the base. We also use rice. What we do is we put the rice, 150 grams of rice, with a liter of water. And we let the rice really grow in that by boiling 15 minutes. On the side, we make a mixture. We put the egg yolk and a bit of flour. What does this flour? The egg yolk helps to bind the yogurt. Here we have the hot boiling soup. If we just directly pour the yogurt, it might also curdle. So what we do, we put several spoons of the hot water by constantly mixing with the yogurt and it warms up the yogurt. So we pour it back, becomes this great thing. And on the side, Turkish cuisine has different kinds of sauces, but the sauces are not like side things or on top things. We mix it with itself. So another sauce is on the stove, we put some butter and then some mint. It turns into this green greatness and we put it in the soup. 
If you are not a big fan of using butter, you can use olive oil as well, but butter works in miracles in these soups. If you wanted to make, as a, for example, a main course, you can add a bit of meat, a bit of chickpeas, black-eyed peas, anything, so you can like enrich the soup, so the soup can be a base, like a ramen, it can be a main course. When I was 23, 24, I discovered my first turkey sushis. And then in London, there was this place of, um, I think it was Yo Sushi, small colored, different colored plates uh, of sushi was going around and you would sit and you would pick the, whatever the plate you like. I thought it was a great idea. Maybe I can have a small place, like a four square meters. Around there would be soups in like glass things and small cups. So people can have like few sushis and then soups to go in big glasses. That was my really great fantasy. That's, I believe, a great idea of low calorie, well balanced diet. Soup is a great thing. Actually once, years ago, I used to write in like the biggest newspaper in Turkey and there I wrote about saving the school meals by adding soups to all the canteens and having three different types of soups and someone who read my article from Holland to her small district applied this and she wrote a letter that it really worked well. So if you're interested in balanced diets at schools or if you are a business person looking for a nice entrepreneurial job, soups can save you guys. Fourth technique I summarize it as like pieces of thing in a soup. It could be a see-through soup or it could be some color. The most famous one is the chicken soup. Chicken soup is usually what you make when you're really sick. It will help you. And usually in the world and in Turkey as well, you throw the chicken in, you throw some onions and a bit of tomato sauce and you put the stock and then you put a bit of vermicelli or, or pasta. But I want to tell you how you do it in a different level so even greater. What we do first, we put some olive oil, then we put some chicken in, brown the chicken first. Browning the chicken increases the taste of the chicken by itself. When the chicken is on the pan, there is going to be brownness sticking on the pan. And that's also a great taste. To get that taste out, we also dice one onion and then we put some garlic. Garlic is very important, some natural antibiotics, by the way, salt black pepper and then water or stock. We boil it really well so that the chicken loses its tenseness and then we take the chicken out, make it into thin, thin, thin shreds. Then after we shred the chicken, we put some butter in and then we put the chicken back and then also we brown that shredded chicken a bit as well. Some more garlic and then also we call that arpa shehriye and we also brown that as well. It has that a crunchy feeling. Instead of just let it boil in water, browning it increases the taste, the nutty taste. Then we also put the water in and the chicken and everything in. Voila, we get our soup. But before we serve it, the most important thing is put a bit of parsley and lemon juice. It's one of the best soups that you can eat. When we say like this is like some pieces, if it's a meat or a version of a meat, it could be suju, it could be pancetta or something, browning and giving the taste and the fat to the soup is very important and it's very essential. Secondly, put the diced things or small things in such a way that in each spoon you get like a piece of everything. It makes the soup even better. When you make puree, add anything, whatever you like. It could be a pumpkin, carrots, green cabbage, a bit of ginger would do, a bit of garlic would do. Let them boil together and blend, and blend it really well. So it's a nice puree, great soup. Any kind of puree, from broccoli to celeriac, you can make all the soups edible. What I mean by making soup edible is maybe we are not really a big fan of eating a lot of veggies and some veggies smell rather bad than others. But some other tastes that we really like a lot, like what chocolate does to many of the desserts, butter and flour would do really nicely. Some crunchiness from bulgur or from vermicelli as well, that would also be really good. So playing around is very nice. 
We have another technique. It's actually kind of like a sauce that you make. It's called pacha or terbiye. Exactly the same things, but what it does, it has the sourness and the creaminess together. Any vegetables you like, carrots, red peppers, some meat if you like as well, some chicken, add all of them together, fry them a bit so that the taste increases, some garlic, some onion if you like, you can put the whole onion if you don't want pieces of onion to eat. So that's a really nice mixture on the side. On the other side, when it's still it's boiling with water, mix some yogurt, egg yolk, we're familiar with from the yogurt soup as well, a lot of garlic, and then some vinegar or lemon juice. They would both work. And when you mix this and add a bit of boiling water of the veggies when they're really soft, right? Before they go really mushy, we get the water out, we warm up the mixture, and then we slowly add it back to the soup. And it has this sourness, fresh garlic taste, and with a lot of veggies, and it's incredible. Some greens always go on top and really well. Another soup making is the one with the cream. Tomato soup, broccoli soup, especially mushroom soup, is now very well known and very widely cooked soups. I can say if you don't have cream, double cream in your house, you can still make a cream soup. It's by adding milk and reducing the soup slowly. For example, if you're trying to make a mushroom soup with a bit of chicken, it could be fried a bit of mushroom, some garlics, add it all together and then maybe some chives if you like, and then put some stock, get all the goodness at the bottom of the pan together, and also a bit of milk before it's hot, because it might curdle the milk and we get uh, some cheesy <laughs> soup, we don't want that. Uh, you can put the milk and cook for 10 to 15 minutes, you're gonna have this great cream soup. Or you can directly put some cream, mix really well, it will be this beautiful cream soup. Tomatoes, broccoli, all good. And finally, Last but not least, Tarhana is very unique. You might not do it at home, but you can buy it from the shops of some Turkish shops. And in Turkey, we have various Tarhanas, starting from with tomatoes, plain ones, white ones, or even from plums, or even from cranberries, we make Tarhana. You might say, what the hell is Tarhana? It's again, the basis is yogurt, but it's a preserve method. How you do it? You get the yogurt, let's say three kilograms of yogurt. You let it stay outside for at least three days. It starts to smell and it starts to grow bigger with holes and bubbles, etc. Then you put it on the stove. One day before, you put some cracked wheat. You add that cracked wheat to the boiling yogurt. Then you add the garlic, add a bit of milk and let it reduce for a while. As it comes to a thin dough status, it's almost ready. You put some boiled chickpeas in and voila, you have this mixture. You put it on a tray, you let it dry for the night. You crack it a bit, maybe for another night, if you're in a cool, without moist place. If you're like, for example, in Istanbul, I can never dry it in normal conditions. If you don't have a dryer, you cannot dry it. Anyways, what I do, I put it on the small container bags. Each time I want to use it, I take one bag out. I put it some water on, really mix it well. When it starts to boil, my soup starts to come to its senses. And on the side, I put a bit of butter and dice some halloumi cheese. And I never touch those halloumi cheese because I want them to be brown at the outside. And butter goes great. It starts to brown a bit. Then you add it to the soup and you have this incredible soup with a bit of sourness, crunchiness, and it's amazing. So, that's eight different types of soup making from these soils. Hope you enjoyed it. Now there's a new button called thanks. Like, if you love what we do, and we're in Turkey, the conditions are not so great. So if you want to support it, you can go to thanks and support us. Nice thumbs up, a bit of a small comment would also go a long way. That's it guys, hope you enjoyed, take care.